Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this video is take a look at 1CNC 4-axis wrap machining. Now, 4-axis wrap machining is when you are machining geometry that's wrapped around a cylinder. So it's only for situations where you have things like pockets, profiles, text, holes, or anything like that that are wrapped around a cylinder. So what we're going to do in this video is I want to walk you through step by step on how to make sure the parts position correctly. Uh, we're going to look at working with unwrapped geometry. We'll apply toolpath. We'll also take a look at preview, simulate, and we'll also get inside the post processor a little bit as well. All right, so the first thing to note is that when you start off, you want to make sure that your part is positioned correctly in reference to the axis of rotation. And you can see in this example, we have the part and the axis of rotation is our x-axis, and that goes right through the center of the part. So that's definitely correct. Now, once you have that, then it's time to think about the geometry that we're going to machine. We're actually not going to machine this geometry here. We're going to be machining flat or unwrapped geometry. And then at the end of the day, one CNC is going to take that toolpath and give us the right CNC code and apply it to our, our, our shape here. In this example, we have a solid model, so we can use the unwrap tool to unwrap the geometry and create our flat geometry for us. Now before I do that, I want to point something out. Um, I'm going to go to a top view here. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit, and I want you to pretend that this is a clock. And up here at 12 o'clock, that's going to be A0. Over here at 3 o'clock, that's going to be A90. A180, A270, and A360. That's how unwrap is looking at your part. So if we were to perform an unwrap, and let's say we're going to unwrap this surface right here at the top, you can see that this surface starts at A270, and it goes past A0, and then it goes all the way to A90. So let's unwrap this. We're going to head over here to our model tools. We're going to select unwrap and I'm going to just select that upper surface and left click and when I do that it unwraps it. It uses the color in this color palette and this represents A270, there's A360, then it goes all the way to A90 again. Alright, so it's unwrapped that correctly. If I were to change colors here to like an orange and we go to unwrap, let's take a look at this bottom surface. This bottom surface starts at A90 and it goes clockwise all the way around to A270. So if I unwrap that bottom one, you can see that this line right here represents A90, and then we've got our uh, A180, and then A270. That's how unwrap works, and that's how it references this theoretical clock, where the top here, the uppermost Z value, is uh, A0. So there's our unwrapped geometry. Now, before we start applying toolpath to this, I want to talk a little bit about the post processor, because the post processor actually controls the direction in which the part's going to rotate. It also uh, controls the limit or the envelope of rotation. So it's important to make sure that your post processor has enough envelope of rotation to machine the part. We know that this starts here at A270 then it goes to A360 and then back to uh, 90 again. So we need to make sure our post processor has the, the proper envelope for that. Now let's, let's do this. Let's quickly go into the post processor. Just right hand mouse click up here and if you want to you can select post group if you want. That's one way to do it. Or you can just double click this toolpath group. Where it says post, what I'd like you to do is click setup. Now, you don't always have to do this when machining the part. I just want to show you the mechanics behind it, and I want to ensure everything works as expected on your end as well. So click on the multi-axis tab, and right here you can see here's the envelope uh, for the machining for this particular post processor. For four-axis wrap, this particular machine has the limits of minus 360 degrees and positive 360 degrees. To demonstrate that, if I were to go up here to the NC manager and go into our set machining axis, if we select four axis wrap, it's going to ask us the axis of rotation. We want to pick X axis. The material diameter, this happens to be four inch diameter there, so I already have four inches in there. This minus six inches, that's just to give us a display of the envelope. That's not that critical, but the diameter and the axis of rotation are definitely critical. I'm going to click OK to that, and you're going to see this red rectangle here. 
This red rectangle represents the envelope of rotation for this particular post processor. You can see here that here's 360 degrees, just like we thought, and here's minus 360 degrees. So for this post processor, if we were to machine this part, it would machine this pocket fine, it would machine half of this pocket, rotate around, and then machine the other half. And that's typically not what you want. And the way to solve it is to make sure that you have enough envelope of rotation in your post processor. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here, change this to three axis positioning, and I'm going to, again, go into the post processor. I'm just going to double click on that. We'll go into setup. Once you set this up, you'll never have to do it again. All right, so let's go into multi-axis. And you could, for example, type in minus 9999 if you wanted to. And then for the positive, you could put in 9999 as well. I like to keep it a little more real than that, maybe something like minus uh, 720. And how about positive 720? We'll click OK to that. Now let's go to our NC manager. This is where we're instructing one CNC the type of machining we want to do. We're going to four axis wrap. We're going to rotate around the X axis. The diameter is four inches. The material length is fine. We'll click OK. And now you can see that this post processor definitely has enough envelope. Setting your post processor to positive 720 and minus 720 for the uh, four axis wrap envelope is definitely something that will, it'll work for all situations. OK. So there we go. We've got the post processor set up. We've told one CNC that we want to machine four axis wrap. And now it's just a matter of machining the part. So let's head over here to stock tool paths. And I'm going to go with a pocket operation. I'm going to select both those pockets. Right hand mouse click. I already have a half inch diameter end mill selected. And we're going to be machining at minus 250 thousandths. That's the depth of our pocket. And you don't have to worry about the diameter of the part and that. Just make sure that you've got this set to Z0 and simply put in the depth that you want. So we'll click in Next. I'll do High Speed Closed on that. We'll Helical Ramp in. I don't need a finish pass for this example. We'll just let it generate the tool path. Now let's drill these holes. So we'll head over here to our Drill Single, Arc Center. I'm going to grab that hole and that hole, that one and that one. Right hand mouse click, Finish. And I already have a quarter inch diameter drill set in there. That all looks fine. The material top, we want to make sure that's set to zero for that. And for our depth, we're going to say minus half of an inch. The rest of this looks great. And there we go. So now if we were to preview this, let's turn our tooling back on. If we were to go into preview, right hand mouse click, preview tool paths. We're going to see the part indexing correctly and the toolpath applied on there. You're also going to get the correct A axis code uh, within the CNC program. Now, if you don't see your part spinning, it's because you don't have the show axis simulation turned on. If your tool is moving and the part isn't spinning, all you need to do is just click this on. Having this turned on or turned off does not affect the CNC code, it just affects the simulation. All right, let's speed it up just a bit and there's our whole cycles. All right, so that's preview. Now let's take a look at simulate. Now for simulate, this is where you're going to show the stock being removed. Now what I suggest doing is using solid models for your stock. All right, so I'm going to turn these other layers off and show you what I have on my stock layer. Notice how I have a layer called stock. It's all in uppercase. We're going to open this up. And here's the geometry. You can see I have the uh, solid for the part. I've got a solid for the tooling plate, solids for the different cap screws and all the various fixturing involved with that. So just make sure that you have your geometry, your solid models on a layer called stock and make sure you use all uppercase on that. Okay, so to simulate what we're going to do is right hand mouse click. We're going to select simulate and make sure you use this option called stock model. That's going to use all the solid models on this layer called stock. We'll click OK to that. And here we go. I'm going to slow this down a bit. So you can see all the solid models and you can see the uh, toolpath simulating. Again, if you don't see the parts spinning around here, it's because you don't have the axis sim turned on. 
that doesn't affect the CNC code it just affects the simulation thanks so much for watching just as a recap one CNC four axis wrap machining is when we are machining geometry that has been wrapped around a cylinder if you have a solid model you can use the model tools to unwrap the geometry or if you don't have a solid model you can create the unwrapped geometry from scratch just by using lines arcs and points and so on thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video